forging cyber, forging cyber security experts. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV. I'm at the IOASIS Lounge in San Francisco, right down the street from the RSA conference. And I'm speaking with Gunter Ullman. He is the Chief Technical Officer of IO Active. How are you today? Fine, thank you. Looking forward to it. How can you not be fine at this beautiful lounge? Well, it's a good escape from Atlanta, right? It is, absolutely. This is such a peaceful environment, and you guys are doing some talks here and you know, mingling with people in the cybersecurity community, which is great. Um, what kind of value do you find every year kind of participating with RSA and, and doing your own thing at IO, IO, IOASIS? IOASIS, <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's interesting. So if you've ever been to a lot of these shows and that, you know, especially with all the you know, RSA and uh, all these things, you spend so much time you know, walking the booths and things, and uh, frankly, it sucks, right? You know, right? What you really want to do is just like chill out, yeah. Uh, have, you know, grab a beer or just sort of sit down with a few friends or a few acquaintances and just really talk shop without you know the the constant sell and and so we've been running our active for uh, you know the I O A S is for about four years now mm -hmm. uh, and at all the major security events and it just works out it grows bigger and bigger you know masses you name it uh, just sort of helps people chill definitely and what kind of what kind of crowd does I O A S is attract. Well, it's a mix. So we get all of the, you know, if you like the our big customers, obviously turn up as the VIPs and that. But uh, we do a lot of community work uh, as mm -hmm. well. So we're constantly, you know, hiring. So it becomes a recruitment channel. Um, but it's it's also just about education. So you know, at the back here, we're doing a lot of presentations uh, and really talking about you know, new research, research that's coming out, uh, and you know, giving the dirt on some of the things that we've you know released uh, or you know, uh, done some public research in you know, in the last few weeks. And what are some of those things that you're presenting here? Well, it, it's, it's a mix. So uh, I was just on a stage with a colleague, uh, Chris Valasek, and we were talking really about the uh, security intelligence, about you know, going from the, the tactical to uh, strategic side. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've got uh, you know, some of the team that are going to be talking about some of the medical device uh, hacking side, some of the uh, new semiconductor reverse engineering, a lot of the SCADA work, uh, and you know, some new attack techniques for uh, against um, memory, uh, you know, operating system memories. Now, do you find that like timing your announcements right around the RSA show is an effective way to get the message out there? Well, it is, but we do two different types of things. So obviously, iOasis running through the event is the is the main attraction to bring sort of people here and to talk and communicate. Uh, but you know, we do a lot of research, and so we time a lot of the disclosures uh, around these big events. So last last week, we uh, uh, released a lot of vulnerabilities or information about the the Balkan uh, uh, home automation tools and things. You know, and in the next few weeks, we're we'll doing some more you know, security research. Uh, actually, uh, when it comes to disclosures, then uh, this week is pretty quiet for us because you know, there's so much other noise on there, and it's time to relax. Right, absolutely. <laughs> this is a great place to relax. But I understand you are speaking at RSA as well. I am indeed. There's no escape from that. Yeah, I've right. got like the, the very last slot on Friday afternoon. <laughs> great. But uh, now I'll be talking about um, uh, basically the hiring and building of uh, uh, cyber mercenary teams. So it, it's a little bit of a mix of you know, the, uh, how, how the community has changed, but, but also, you know, the, the way that professional cyber people are being pulled into uh, dealing with conflicts, military conflict now, uh, and right. so how the uh, traditional, you know, uh, private militias uh, are hiring hackers to, to help secure them and to carry out their objectives. Right, cyber mercenary teams. That's the one. That's a great <laughs> term. I mean, it makes sense, definitely. Well, Gunter, we love the IOASIS Lounge. Thank you so much for having us here, and thank you for speaking with us. We're going to go downstairs and check out the Dune Buggy giveaway and all the awesome stuff you've got going on here. Excellent. Thanks. Enjoy, enjoy your time. Definitely. Cheers. Thank you. And now we're going to speak with Chris Valasek. He is the Director of Security Intelligence for IOActive. How are you, Chris? Good. How are you doing, Elisa? I am doing great because I am at the IOASIS Lounge, and it's so relaxing. Isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful, and there's so much fun stuff going on. Tell us about some of the stuff you've got going on here. Yeah, the nice thing is it takes you off the craziness of the main floor at RSA. Mm -hmm. So you can come here, relax, have yourself a drink. And uh, we're actually doing some talks as well. Uh, I did a talk this morning with Gunter about security intelligence. Uh, I think we have one going on right now as we speak. Um, I'm not even sure what it's about. I think we're ICS or something like that. And then later on this afternoon, Dr. Charlie Miller and myself will be talking about car hacking. 
Right, and you'll be speaking here? I'll be speaking here. About it? About, uh, about car hacking, and as well at RSA, RSA on Friday. Tell me about car hacking, because that sounds terrifying and interesting <laughs> at the same time. Do you like cars? I do. Do you like hacking? I do. All right, <laughs> then car hacking's for you as well. <laughs> no, uh, automobiles have went from purely mechanical machines to really a big computer, many yeah. computers on four wheels. So we wanted to investigate what you could do if you were to infiltrate the car's network, what you could control. And we found that we could control everything from steering to braking to acceleration to the seat belts or the horn. So much of the modern automobile is not so shockingly controlled by computers. Right. Now how would one hack a car in a nutshell? In a nutshell. So uh, first, there's kind of two pieces to this. Uh, first, you kind of have to figure out how the car works. Each car is different. They kind of have different messages. Uh, for example, a BMW is going to be different than a Ford that's going to be different than a Toyota. Um, so you need to figure out those things. And then you need to figure out what your attack vector is going to be. Uh, we were plugged into the diagnostic port. Um, so we could unplug at any time and the messages would go away. But you could also compromise things like Bluetooth that everyone has in their car, or telematics, uh, OnStar, or Mercedes Embrace. Uh, even the tires have wireless tire pressure monitoring in them that if you could compromise them, you could potentially take control of the car as well. Just create a flat. <laughs> exactly. You could tell the car that has a flat tire and it may stop. Well, it sounds like all these things are built into cars. What could a person do to protect themselves from car hackers? Well, <laughs> right now, luckily, it's not commoditized. Right. It takes a lot of research, and each car is different, like I said before. Right. Um, but really, we did this research because we wanted to start the dialogue with automobile manufacturers to get them more interested in security. And I think it's resonating. So hopefully, people like Charlie and I will be talking to more and more uh, car manufacturers, and we can all make it better for everyone. That's awesome. We love to hear that. <laughs> and now you actually have a giveaway here at the IOASIS Lounge that was inspired by the whole car hacking we thing. We do. We have uh, <laughs> this go-kart over here. And uh, it's supposed to be representative of a car, although it ha doesn't have any ECUs. Uh, it does represent the type of research we're doing. We really like looking at unique and different things instead of just going with all the mainstream stuff. So you can come here, uh, win a go-kart, and the hashtag is IOASIS go-kart. You use it on Twitter, uh, and you can win the cart. So do they have to be here and then tweet, or just tweet? Uh, you can, you can tweet and enter, and you can also enter here uh, physically as well. Awesome. Now, is this go-kart hackable? If someone won this, would the, could it possibly later be hacked by someone? Maybe with a crowbar or a hammer, but I don't think you're going to do much computer <laughs> hacking on this one. Right. Well, that's good to hear. Well, Chris, thank you so much for speaking with us today and having us over at the IOASIS Lounge. This has been a fabulous experience. Oh, it's a pleasure. Cheers. Cheers. And everyone at home, make sure you don't miss anything we're shooting here at RSA and the surrounding conferences. So subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, definitely follow us on Twitter, and we even have an Instagram account these days, so make sure you follow us there. I'm Alicia Webb. Thank you so much for watching. Secure Ninja TV is brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in cybersecurity training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. Secure Ninja, forging cybersecurity experts.